Well, Mother Nature tried to throw us a curveball tonight, but not even these frigid temperatures could stop the high school basketball action. Welcome into Five on Your Sideline. I am Corey Miller. And I am Annie Kroll. And we also have some amazing local athletes to spotlight tonight. But before we do that, you know it's highlight time. Let's get things going. First off, the oldest rivalry in town, Kirkwood versus Webster Groves. Webster starts swings off strong. Isaiah Purvey connects at the top of the key. But that's going to be another one for him coming up right here. Look at that. The senior makes another easy three, lighting up his own bench. But Kirkwood's going to try and come back, giving the ball to Evan Simon, who scores from behind the line as well. But if you know anything about Webster Groves boys basketball, you know the name. Scotty Atkinson spins in for a basket. There's a reason that he's well known. But it's going to be a final score of Webster Groves 66, and Kirkwood has 52. I know that gym was rocking tonight. Here's a gym that was also rocking. Chaminade at the Smet. No surprise, it was a great one. Two great teams, two great coaches, lots of great players. Jamison White, he's one of them. Nice finish for Chaminade. Let's go back the other way. Riley Massey, that's three for DeSmet. Red Devils are going to answer, though. Colin Keller, three from the corner. That's good for Chaminade. And back and forth, and back and forth we go. Now it's Wolf Folk's turn. He gets a triple for DeSmet. Let's do some defense, though. Jamison White, again, look at this block coming up. He's going to send that in the first row just about. The Spartans were at home, though, and they got one more back. Get the fall than their opponents. This is Dylan Duff with the lay in. The Smet wins by one. 49 48 over Shamanad. Very tight. Kirkwood and Webster girls trying out. Again, giving us a roller coaster ride tonight. Look at this. Brooke Rose with a Kirkwood breakaway. But then it's going to be Webster's Ansley Snicker who's going to float one in. Her teammates are going to absolutely lose their minds. It's going to be foreshadowing something a little bit later. You're going to see that in a second. But this one right here, a big steal is going to come thanks to Anna Newland from Kirkwood. Gets two points. Then she's going to have her teammate Reagan Redmond throw it underneath. That's going to put them up. 40 Webster, 41 Kirkwood. But wait, this is the shot of the game. A three-point clutch from Ellie oh. Hyman. Five seconds left, and it's going to be Webster Groves who wins at home. Place lighting up, 43 to Kirkwood's 41. Great finish there. A couple good teams clashing out in the GAC tonight in Wentzville. Zoom Walt South against Liberty. Some good ball movement. Finds Carter Ashby in the corner. Free for Liberty. Zoom Walt South answered back. Connor Henke. This is good from downtown from the wing. Amazing play up next. Liberty is going to make two great plays just to keep the ball in bounds. Then the ball is going to end up in Ashby's hands. He sicks it, and he got fouled. Four-point play. Wow. Big win for the Eagles tonight. Liberty rolls 50-37 to 37 over Zoom Walt South. A little bit more girls basketball. Aspen girls taking on Villa Duchenne. It's going to be a nice play from Villa. One, two, three. Floats it right in there. Kelly Eigelberg gets it in. And then there's going to be another one. Villa again. Kylie O'Hagan scores after a nice pass. Aspen would find their stride from deep, though. Emma Grana connects on two. Three-pointers as the Cougars win tonight. 42 to 29. We have so many good programs around our town. It's tough to pick ones to spotlight. But when it comes to talent and winning for the boys and girls, there may not be a more successful school this year than John Burroughs. The boys come into tonight 11 and 3. They have a pair of near 7 foot sophomores in Tristan Reed and Sheik Pearson. Colleges will be calling on them for three years. Pee Wee Leonard's squad is legit. We know the Burroughs girls are legit. They won it all in 2022 when this senior class, led by Gonzaga bound Allie Turner and elite scorer Monet Witherspoon, were just sophomores. Their only loss this year, a four-point defeat to Incarnate Word, who we know hasn't lost a game since 2020. Both of these programs are rising, and both have a clear goal. Yeah, we both really want to win this year, both the boys and the girls, and I think we have the perfect teams to do so. When we look up at our banner and everything, it's the first time in our school's history that we've ever gotten a basketball state championship on boys or girls' side, so to do it again would mean a lot. Well, the one thing, they do enjoy playing together, and that's a big part of the success we've been having this year. Hey, we're going we gonna, to we gonna make, make it down to, uh, is, it, is it in Columbia this year? We're going we to make it down to Columbia, yes sir. I think that our biggest thing is just sticking together, playing together as one, uh, one unit. So let's see how the boys fared tonight against MICDS. Good start for the Bombers. Max Steinbach, coast to coast and one. Teammates love that one. MICDS hanging in there. Jason Stokes, that's good for three. But Burroughs can beat you from all over. Look at this crossover coming up. He's an ankle breaker, Annie. Oh, there he goes. That's the one. DJ Johnson's going to end up with it. He converts for two. 
Next up, it is the big man. Good luck boxing out six foot eight sophomore Tristan Reed. You're not gonna have much left there. He cleans up the glass for two. And finally, senior Ramsey Salem sinks a triple from deep coming up, and he is gonna get the whole crowd fired up in the process. Bombers stand tall at home. They beat MICDS 73-54. Well, how about one of the few teams to beat the Burroughs boys so far this year is this team. The Ledoux Rams came in tonight on a 13 game winning streak. Yes, 13. By far the longest in program history. Their head coach, Chad Anderson, also became the school's all-time wins leader during the streak. It's a balanced attack for the Rams that has them focused on getting back to the state title game. Yeah, I think this is probably one of the more balanced teams I've had. I mean, we have, you know, seven or eight kids that can go off and get 15 or 20 a night. If Sam's not going to hit a three like Dwayne's would get a dunk, like, it's just like everybody has their own role and, like, their way to, like, make the game momentum change. Yeah, I mean, I think, it, I mean, I take it one game at a time, but, yeah, at times I do think I can, I want to go 32 and 0. I want to win the whole thing. We love to spotlight high school athletes who go on to do great things. Frederick Moore certainly qualifies. The Cardinal Ritter grad won a national championship in his first year as a receiver for the Michigan Wolverines. In fact, he has now won 29 games in a row, dating back to his days at Cardinal Ritter. It sounds great just coming into college, winning my freshman year. I know I came short in high school, my first freshman year, I'm supposed to win, but coming into college, starting off on a great foot. Playing for Coach Harbaugh, he's definitely a uh, coach for the players, so he do with everything. He do everything he can do to put you in the best position. So I feel as though I really love Coach Harbaugh, and he meant a lot to me, giving me the opportunity to play at University of Michigan. Up next, I've got the story of perhaps the luckiest young soccer fan in St. Louis. You're not going to want to miss this one. We'll see you after the break. If you're watching this sports show on a Friday night, I'm betting at some point in your life you love sports trading cards. Maybe you've lost them over the years. Maybe your mom threw them away without telling you. Or maybe you've kept them to pass down. But I don't think anybody watching right now has ever had a hit like this young man you're about to meet. Restless Craft Card Shop in St. Peter's sells gold. You just have to know where to look and get lucky. And 10-year-old Jet Meyer knows something about striking gold. On release day of the new MLS top set, Jet and his dad got a case hunting for City SC players. But they got something else, too. You know, we were just going for the city cards, and we didn't think we'd get, you know, like, I wanted that one or that Messi. The Messi is a one-of-one one Lionel Messi Miami FC Super Fractor, possibly the holy grail of MLS trading cards. The only one like it anywhere, of possibly the best player to ever touch a soccer ball. He's kind of froze, you know, because this is so crazy. I think it's one in 34,000 packs to get a Super Fractor, and there's maybe 150 players listed, so... We're talking million, you know, there's millions of cards out there, so I, I can't even wrap my head around it, really. It's kind of like winning the lotto. When you're talking about a hit of that magnitude, you just never expect it's going to come to you. It's going to come into your shop. So now that Jet owns the only card like this in the world, the question is, what comes next? Well, we think we're going to sell this one because, you know, we're not... Like big, big messy fans, like I said. So it's, we're just gonna sell it, see how much we get. Some of it will go to my college fund. So <laughs> we're undecided. Money talks, but I, I mean, at the same time too, it's a it was a great bonding moment with my son. So I have that memory as well. The offers have already been coming in, and they are substantial. Like close to thirty thousand dollars substantial. It's been really crazy because you know I've been telling my friends that I just got like one of the rarest cards in probably the world. Also, I've been ecstatic about the offers that we've gotten for this card. Like, I think our highest offer was like twenty-seven thousand dollars, which is that's a lot of money. A once-in-a-lifetime hit and a once-in-a-lifetime memory for father and son. To have him and Brad sit down together, open the case together, and for that car to jump out of that case. I mean, you couldn't write a better script than that.
As they head into the second half of the season with tomorrow's game against the Bruins, the Blues aim to keep racking up wins against some of the league's top teams. No kidding, Corey. They currently sit two points out of a playoff spot after last night's win over a top New York Rangers team. To make that happen, the Blues were physical and blocked some shots around the net. St. Louis stood strong despite facing almost twice as many shots as New York. Offensively, they found some harmony as well, converting 50% of their power play opportunities. Coach Drew Bannister said those successful power plays helped secure a very crucial win. We scored off the rush and then, you know, the second goal, um, I thought that, that that second unit was was really good, you know, when we put them out there to, to start that, uh, that power play and, you know, they were able to create some chaos around the net. Sonny did a great job and, and Sauter jumped on that rebound and put it in. Busy hopefully, weekend in St. Louis. Hopefully, more sports. wins to come. Definitely. Hopefully, tomorrow <laughs> night against the Bruins. We got Blues Bruins tomorrow night. We got the winter warm up I mean, all weekend long. Just stacked, Corey. And we got it all here. I love it. Five on your side. <laughs> Should be here. That'll do it for Five on Your Sideline tonight. For Annie Crawl, I'm Corey Miller. Have a great night, St. Louis.